This is the WJTS 2008 Canada Series. Local people watching local people on WJTS. Tonight's special guests are Mark Messmer, running for State Representative, District 63. And John Berger, running for State Representative, District 63. Welcome to the Candidate Series. Our guest at this time is Mark Messmer, who is running for Indiana State Representative in District 63. Mark, welcome. Thank you, Paul. It's great to have you on the program, and uh, uh, District 63 covers part of Dubois, Mark Pike, and Davies County. That's correct. And uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I'm married to Kim for about 23 years. We have uh, four kids. Um, Eric's 20, uh, Laura's 17, Madeline 13, and Luke 12. Uh, I'm the co-owner of Mesmer Mechanical with my two brothers. Dad started the company in 1970, and, and uh, we've been owners for about three years. Uh, graduated from Purdue in 1985 uh, with a degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, member of Holy Family Church here in Jasper. Um, and I've been involved in a variety of ministries out there. I've uh, been on Finance Council um, 1989 to 92, Parish Council after that, School Board after that. Uh, I've been a music minister since 1995 and a scout leader for uh, 20 years um, with the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts out there. Um, I'm a licensed professional engineer since 1990, and I'm a member of the uh, National so Society of Professional Engineers, the American Society of Heating and Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers, and I'm also past president of the local chapter for that, and been the Technical Energy and Government Affairs Chair for about 15 years in that organization. Member of Indiana Farm Bureau, the Knights of Columbus, um, Jasper Kiwanis Club, uh, when I was uh, secretary for two years, vice president, president, and then, and then um, treasurer, and uh, currently the sponsor of the Holy Family Builders Club, which is our youth organization uh, of Kiwanis. Um, National Rifle Association member, uh, been a Right to Life member here in Dubois County for about 20 years, and actively involved in the local chapter. Uh, for about the last 10 years, I've been involved with the Carnation sales that we do on Mother's Day to raise money for the group and attended several of their annual banquets. Um, I've been a advocate of writing letters to the federal officials, the uh, Senator Luger, Luger, Coates and By, Lee Hamilton, Baron Hill, Mike Saldo during all their 10 years to promote pro-life issues. Um, and I pray daily for an end to abortion. So Right to Life's been a uh, personal cause of mine for a long time. Um, and I guess I'd just like to point out there's a, uh, the way I see it, there's a big difference between a uh, pro-life advocate or somebody who simply pays their pro-life dues the years they're running for a particular office. Um, and I think that covers my background. Very so. good. And then, uh, of course, it kind of uh, gave uh, us the idea of why you, part of why you are running for this office. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I guess I decided to run uh, it was about this time last year that I finally, after many months, probably, you know, getting into years of debating whether I, I should or shouldn't run for office at some level. Um, and finally, after, you know, a lot of prayer and discernment, uh, just felt like the, the answers that, that I kept getting were, uh, it's time to get involved. Um, I guess seeing what had uh, happened um, in the state legislature the last couple of years, um, watching some you know, heavily partisan issues uh, come down to affecting I-69 funding, which that, you know, that project has been talked about for decades. It's to the point where it was time to, to fund the project and get it moving. And, and the last two years, our, our current representative had voted against funding, although you know, promoting it publicly when he was, was home, um, when he got up there and it was time to put, you know, put your money where your mouth is, uh, he failed to do that. And, and used it as a, as a partisan issue. Um, in 2006, when the Base Realignment Commission made their announcements, the uh, Mark Welsh, the commander from Crane, came to one of our Jasper Kiwanis meetings and told us Crane was on the closure list until the last day of the process in 2006. And the only reason why it was spared was a commitment from 
from the uh, governor of Indiana to, to get the project moving uh, several years ahead of schedule and and how the funding was going to be done and how the schedule was going to be done and uh, our current representative um, felt it was more important to to obstruct the governor and and play partisan games with it than than do the right thing uh, and that was that was the and cranes too vital to, to southern yes. Indiana uh, it, it covers district 63 it's in the heart of our district um, I-69 is intended to run right by the base because the commander from Crane said no interstate, no tech park were the top two reasons why they were scheduled to be closed. And uh, there was a few internal things they need to do and he said we can fix the internal um, how we work on projects but those two items were, we depend on the people of Indiana to get that done. And uh, uh, losing 5,000 jobs to southern Indiana would be, uh, would be an impact more than any of us want mm. to deal with. And if there's something we can do about it, then we need to. Um, and seeing, you know, the last several years, seeing the band-aids that, that the uh, state legislature continually put on property tax uh, starting in 1998. Th this, this issue hasn't just popped up in 2007. It's been, it's been on the path uh, of where we're at since 1998 when they threw out our assessment process way back then. And, and the continually putting band-aid upon, upon band-aid and never getting to the, to the root causes of the property tax uh, issues that we have. Um, just decided if, you know, if something's going to change and permanent fixes are going to be done, obviously somebody new has to be willing to get involved. Well, let's, uh, why don't we discuss some of these major issues you've kind of hit on okay. funding for I-69. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, the project is scheduled to break ground this summer. Thank goodness. Um, except in 2006, when they when they approved the major moves funding, um, that that set the, the funding mechanism in place. Uh, in 2007, uh, during the House session, they passed they, they passed the, the entire two-year budget out of out of the House with you know the billion plus dollars of highway funding for two years, you know left out of the budget, um, and. They, that was, you know, the, the funding of I-69 in 2007, it was used as, as a lever, uh, you know, to, to get about $300 million of, uh, I'll call it pork barrel spending, uh, crammed into the final budget, uh, and, and the, the Speaker of the House thought the only way they could get that extra spending in that they wanted, that the, that the Senate didn't want, was to hold I-69 funding hostage. Um, uh, I-69, there's no economic development project that we can do for Southern Indiana that would be more of an impact than I-69. It's not only the, the construction jobs that it will create during the building of the, of the road, but the, the protection and, and uh, of the 5,000 jobs of, of the crane employees and the thousands of other people that do support work at the base. Um, we don't need to try to, to Pull in 5,000 additional new jobs if we can if we can do something that that simple and that common sense to protect 5,000 jobs that we already have.